Well, hello guys. This is Infinite Flash. We have a game from the 10th round of the European Individual Chess Championships. Um, we In this game we have Denis Kizmatulin playing white, a pretty strong GM at rated around 2,670. Very strong player. I think he's the top 100 in the world, I think. And we have um, a Ukrainian super GM in Pavel uh, Elginov, not very well known among the chess community, but he's top 50 in the world. Very, very strong player. Um, so this is, I think this is the final round of the of the European Championships. So let's see how it went. We have uh, Dennis playing white and Pavel playing black. In this game we had a Nimzo Indian starting off. And then um, white decides to enter the Rubenstein with this early knight GE2 variation. So um, the main line I can expect, I think, is black wants to kind of... Uh, work against this knight here on e2. It's certainly not normal to have this here, so I think black's idea is totally fair in this position with rook e8, a3, bishop f8, and now knight g3. Um, this is normal. I think uh, e4 is also very normal in this position when I think black is playing d5 for, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, or maybe it's even e5, I forget, or, or c5. All of these look like plausible continuations, but uh, knight g3 e played, knight g3 was played d5 bishop e2 this looks like normal rubenstein stuff where black is getting a quick c5 and both sides have each of their pieces developed um very nicely i think and we get quickly get an isolated queen's pawn position so here um white has to really kind of adjust since his knight's not on the f3 square that's not really a normal kind of isolated queen pawn position um this knight would be really well placed to go to the d4 square at some point, but you know the plans are a little bit different now, and uh, we saw one typical kind of idea in this position with the knight on g3 since the f3 square is vacant. The bishop goes to f3 to apply some pressure uh, on the d pawn, and um, you know this bishop is now well supporting this. I just think that this knight on f g3 is not very useful uh, except for the fact that uh, you know this bishop is prevented from coming here since the knight is controlling that square. Bishop b6, that's normal. b4, white's got to develop his pieces so he goes with bishop b2 and tries to focus along this diagonal. And I think white's doing quite okay except for that black has a very nice move. I think that there's still an opening preparation with this kind of position. Um, and now black uh, plays bishop b5. This is a very nice move I think. Um, you might wonder, um, you know, what's wrong with just taking the pawn, but you know, this kind of continuation is probably not that promising, honestly. Um, and I think that the idea is that, you know, some t kind of capture in d8 is just meant probably if bishop takes up two. And the pawn here is lost with the check, so even material is there at the end. But white is the slightly worse pawn structure. Um, that doesn't really promise white much. Um, I'm wondering about queen takes b7. I probably black just takes here on f2. And, you know, if rook takes f2... Um, Maybe knight d7. <clears throat> I'm still wondering. Maybe you could also think consider bishop h2, followed by queen d6, um, and maybe knight here, trying to trap the queen almost. You can see a, a dangerous idea being that, or maybe even rook b8, rook b5, both rooks coming here, and this is looking slightly dangerous for white. And you know, so white has no development, so it's kind of annoying. <clears throat> Forgive me if I've missed any obvious tactical points. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. You know, going back, um, so we saw bishop d6. That looks plenty, plenty normal. And then white just continued with his development, bishop b2. So here, bishop b5 was played, and that's a nice little move that you know black could have played. Um, did play. He can also play knight c6 and kind of go for the same structure. That's also plausible. But bishop b5 was played, and we just saw white trade off the this very nice powerful bishop on e5 for this bishop right here and some trades happened and you know black is just focused on his development too so from a structural point of view you prefer white but black is very solid in the center here it controls you know these two very important squares and um, is really to just totally equal in my opinion so um, the game just pretty much uh, goes from here as a kind of a maneuvering game um, I just wish these two pieces were whipped around with each other. 
um, it would make a lot more sense to have that knight on f3 and bishop on g3 in this kind of position. These are slightly weird pieces, I, I think, but they seem to work quite well. Um, so we saw queen b6 played by black, rook c1, very normal, just, you know, occupying this open file, possibly preferring, you know, this knight c5 uh, push rate, knight c5 move without worrying about the b4 pawn, uh, as we see with a5 next move. In fact, the a5 is played, and the rook just had to go back since he has to protect it. He doesn't want to capture here and leave the um, the pawn to pressure, under pressure, I mean, um, because of, uh, you know, the rook um, attacking that pawn. So white would have to defend it or try to give it up for uh, some compensation. That's not ideal. Takes, very normal. Pawn captures, and now rook 81. Black has got a very, very nice development in the, in the center, so he shouldn't be worse at all. And in the game, b5 was played. The knight has to move again. Probably a5, yep. And it probably goes to c4 in this position at some point. Yeah, knight e4 was played. Um, you know, you can see this knight just centralizing to the square, and these knights are hopping in and just annoying, um, you know, the white rooks a lot, I, I would imagine. So, black ha white has to react really fast, so he plays knight d4. Captures on e4 first, so he doesn't allow um, a move like, you know, knight ed2. I think uh, if he plays like rook c1, I think um, this... Knight ed2, rook here, and, you know, the bishop is uh, captured, your pawn structure's ruined, and, you know, even b5 just drops, so, um, I don't think that's really ideal for, for white. Um, let's see if I can find the move again in pgn, sorry about that, guys. Bishop takes e4 was normal, and they're centralizing the knight on d4, that's a beautiful, these are some beautiful knights here, so, that makes, um, that looks pretty nice, honestly, so. Uh, for white, so I I would prefer white slightly in this kind of position. The bishop had to drop back. That was pretty normal as well. Rook c1 attacking the knight. Knight had to move. Queen had to get out of this file right out of here. This is really really annoying. Eventually white wants to move this knight at some point uh, to one of these two squares or perhaps drop back to b2 or c2 squares. So it makes a lot of sense to move it. And now uh, black played queen h6. Um, if you're ever wondering about when, how to how to kick this knight out, you can really play g5, but I mean, this kind of move is just really just weakening, so it's not ideal to play this. Uh, one idea is the two play knight d3, so by moving the knight out of the f4 square, you gain the d3 square, but I don't think really white minds that too much with rook c3, and he's a very nice compensation. Um, there's, I mean, not compensation. Is that there's a structural defect of uh, g5. It weakens f5 and weakens h5. All these dark squares. So, um, in the long run, you can see the pieces slowly maneuvering towards over here. So that's not ideal for black, I think. Instead, we saw queen h6 instead of that g5 pawn push. We saw queen h6, and now rook c5. That's that's very very normal in my opinion. Um, you know, just dragging the rook up here to get a tempo on that knight, possibly. Um, keep in mind, um, white has all the nice activity in this kind of position with these beautiful knights, so black has to be slightly careful. Um, you don't want anything happening with, you know, future um, pile-up maneuvers here. And um, you can see knight d5 happening. Looks like a very, very nice position for white. Um, normal move is rook c7, I think, uh, but I think one point was that uh, rook takes d4 was a very nice tactical shot. Um, if e takes, then knight f3, um, that is a very beautiful kind of combination since g takes f3 is met by queen takes f4, the rook is under attack, um, e takes f3 followed by queen g4 is threatened with, that's pretty much just mate if that happens, and you know, maybe white has to give back the rook in you know, this kind of position. Um, is just simply better for black since white is the weak pawn structure and black can uh, play on forever in this kind of position. White's doing pretty badly there. You don't want to play rook c7. You got to play rook c5. And um, I think the idea is that if white black does the same thing. Um, You know this rook is not under attack since it's not on c7, and white has a, a plethora of options. Probably just taking is the easiest, and followed by queen g3 to protect everything, and white wins. So in this position, we we saw instead um, 
set of that we saw black played b6 in this position he didn't like the rook over here and here um you know white has a couple of options in the game he played rook d5 but um he could also consider rook takes here followed by knight c6 gaining a tempo on you know both of these rooks um and here probably queen d6 would happen to salvage the rook on d8 play rook d1 bishop d7 to block the file and you know maybe white's more than slightly better maybe slightly better i don't know this kind of position with you know the very dominating knight over the bat kind of passive bishop and weirdly placed rook very nicely uh placed major pieces for white would be um probably a bit better for white i don't know how much but it's definitely preferable for white for sure um that was also possible but you know he just played rook d5 instead of rook takes e5 and i mean this is okay but i mean it doesn't really lead to anything promising since we see this trade and rook d1 and it doesn't look like much is happening but uh soon enough um we will say something queen g5 you know he's got to avoid knight f3 check i think in this kind of position so he plays king f1 to avoid that g6 looks very normal he's you know just preventing the back row problems from any any back rows problems from happening so um, just a slow, slow planning, kind of Karpov maneuvering, and I really don't see anything going on at the moment. H3, that's normal, just prophylaxis against knight g4 here. Knight d3. Yeah, he's probably got to capture that at some point. First, this knight c6 move to attack the rook and gain a pass pawn instead, uh, if black, since black decided to capture that. And you know, white's got this, his pin is, pin is out of his own with along with the c pawn so you know this can get very dangerous for black fast um if he's not careful so we saw queen c5 first you know addressing the c pawn first that, that's a very nice move for black to play i think that's uh the proper move in this position and you know white's got to protect this pawn he can't allow this to this pawn to go away so he um played queen a4 that's probably a good move honestly and you know black really has a hard time uh, finding a move in this position so he decided to end up and ended up playing um king g7 just a waiting move white gave the check queen a4 and you're almost wondering well if white black goes king g7 is there what's the what's the matter here um and you know that probably would have ended in a draw given that you know this is like move 38 he could have also been buying um some time honestly um if he was worried i don't know i don't think black really liked this position given the passive pawn so he, i don't think black would have minded the draw um but black decided to play rook d6 and it turns out this is a kind of a slight mistake honestly um but white didn't really find the the chink in the armor of this move i think um what he played in the game was queen a8 check um but the problem with this move is c7 check i'm sorry c7 um when you know black is really struggling here if you capture the pawn then you give this check and capture the pawn on e4 notice that this knight is hanging due to all of these pieces and it looks like black's about to collapse notice that if you go here with knight c5 and giving this check followed by taking the rook on here um this queen is pinned it's an unfortunate uh configuration of pieces so black has to immediately react with an f5 check and now the key of the combination is this 96 check forking the king and queen the king has to go here i think hmm, you can take there but it makes more sense to capture a free pawn first and then take the queen and white probably wins with the four on two majority although it might take forever to win uh i mean that's probably winning for white this kind of position um I mean, it doesn't look good for doesn't look good for black at all i think um I mean, it's very difficult to see that when you're on the 39th move, and to play such a move in such a situation is just very critical, and it's hard to calculate. So that's understandable that he missed that. So queen a8 happened, and we saw this kind of move position um, one more time, but instead of just going back like um, like I think he should, um, I think he should at least, right? Mm. Maybe he shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe white can play c7 too. Um, this is certainly a normal move. And if rook c6, I think um, we would have had the, the same kind of position with queen a1 um, followed by king here. Um, notice I don't think you can really go king here. Um, there's actually a kind of a flaw in this position with knight d5. 
um, you can't take this because I have check followed by promotion. So uh, if you can't take, then I get knight of six in, and this is a huge discovered check along this king. Um, all these dark swords are extremely weak, so uh, white's doing pretty well there, I think. You know, if um, king h8, king h6, let's see if we can find this. So queen a1 was played instead of c7. Oh no! Okay, wait, give me a second. Ah! So, as I was saying, guys, I had to pause the recording, and that was a little bit awkward. I was the place I was working with had a little bit of a disturbance there. So, queen a1 check, and let's see if I can find where I left off. King h6 was played. I assume, um, you know, he probably should have just went with king g8, as I mentioned, but uh, king h6 is a bit adventurous, in my opinion. Um, certainly, f6 was also possible. And after this, maybe White would have just taken the rook, taken the knight in, and played rook c1, further advancing the pawn, queen b5, c7. We would have seen a pawn race like that. King g1, maybe. Um, this is going to come with check anyway, and you know White's going to get the new queen anyway, so it doesn't really matter in the end. So we, we'll get a continuation like that, and pretty even position happening, and where a perpetual for either side is imminent. White just has to be careful to avoid a king and pawn endgame when it's just clearly um, winning for black. He just has to avoid those king and pawn endgames, I think. So, you know, going back, um, let's see if I can find them. So, uh, so lost right now. I just got back. It's oof, just a bit of a, an adjustment for me. Queen a1, not f6, of course, but uh, king h6. White took the rook, took the knight. Took back and now queen h8 further um, and let's say permanently leaving this king on h6 trap and here's the critical moment I would say of the game right here here in this position I mean I mean it's just the most normal move in the world to play rook takes c6 and um, after rook takes d3 I think that um, you know this is pretty much going to be okay for black uh, even though his king is a little bit separated from the pack here. Um, Instead of rook takes d3, um, you can consider g4 to try to get at the king, but maybe this is a bit slow. Um, what, make, what happens in the games makes, makes a lot more sense, honestly. Um, rook he didn't play rook takes d6. It's kind of the same ideas as we see, but the problem with this continuation for black, um, what, for what black did in the game, I mean, is that he played queen c2 and kind of left this rook undefended. Queen f8 check happened, but um, notice that there's this mate threat here that uh, white has to watch out for. So after king queen f8, queen and g5 was played. Um, king h5, notice that it's uh, probably just met by g4. King g5, queen takes d6, I think. And, you know, since g4 was played, you had this king g2 move available. And the problem is um, queen f4, followed by um, queen f8, is checkmate. And also, there's also this idea of queen e5 check, I think, um, at some point, perhaps. Um, the main threat is just queen e2, queen f4, king h4, and queen h6 is made. So black has to watch out for that idea in many, many lines. He has to be extremely careful. Um, instead of king h5, he plays king g5 instead. I think that's a better move when, you know, white played the brilliant move, king g1. Um, there's a lot of interesting moves. The first move that comes to mind is like f4, right? But king h4 can be played, and it's not really clear how you're checkmating white. I mean, Queen takes d6, queen takes here, is probably just leading to a, just a draw here when, you know, white really has no chances to get out of this perpetual check right here. Um, I think if h4 also, you can play h4 also uh, to lure out the king, but maybe black can just take that and um, probably just, if you give this check, then hmm, queen takes f7 is possible, queen takes d6. Is possible. Notice that queen f7 and threatening um, this kind of checkmating pattern is a very serious threat, honestly, and there's not much what black can do against it, surprisingly. Um, you'd be, um, it's pretty uh, pretty annoying that the rook has no value in this position since the king is just so awkwardly placed in this position. Uh, so that's certainly possible. Um, I think one idea is that if queen c5, of course, we see this queen f4 um, checkmating idea. So can't really allow that. Um, 
And if uh, queen a4 preventing queen f4, I think um, white has a nice deflection move with c7, uh, threatening to, to win the game immediately, honestly. Um, it doesn't help that um, black can't really afford to take the rook because the king is actually going to be helping support the checkmating ideas in this kind of position. So um, this would be, I think, embarrassing to fall for, I think. Um, just let me make sure I get all my lines right, guys. Hmm. Very surprising. Um, I thought for some reason there, there was got to be a, I'm trying to think of the reason why this is not possible. I think it might be queen f3, but if king g5, I don't see a mate. That's the problem. What am I thinking? Um, queen takes a4, or queen a4. What was the idea here? I'm trying to remember and recall all the all of my notes here. It's got to be f3. Maybe g4. It's possible that that's the move. Just give me a second, I'm trying to think. Let's see. Hmm. There's got to be something in this position. I've been looking at this position. Oh, I see. E4, very, very nice move to cut off the king, threaten this mate. Uh, G5 is not possible because of queen f3. I just noticed this theme, guys, and the most important part is that queen takes f4 is met by uh, f3 check. Very, very beautiful kind of combination and study like pattern here. Um, black head. Absolutely no defense there. Very nice. Beautiful. Wouldn't, uh, took me a while to find that one. Okay, h4 was played. It was not played, but, um, this had similar themes as you could expect with, uh, king g1. I think after, uh, king h4, h4, black probably should just take, um, g3. Let's see. Or perhaps, maybe, maybe black, uh, should take, or maybe play king g4 first. I'm not really sure. Um, hmm. Not really sure what to do here, actually. Hmm. Mm, or maybe king h5. Yeah, maybe king h5. That's a safe looking move. And if g4 takes, um, hmm. I wonder if we can get the same kind of continuation with this kind of stuff. Mm. But maybe white can, black can really just take there and escape. And maybe white doesn't really have anything. And black always has a perpetual check just in case something like a queen coming to g3 or g4 square happens, you know? Um, I think that's probably safe for black. Um, so black has very interesting resources here, but it turns out white plays the amazing looking king g1 move and delays all the pawn pushes just for his king to gather a little bit of support for these pawn pushes in the future um, and leaves the rook ent hanging entirely. Just a fantastic concept. And after queen takes d1, king h2, black really has no defense against queen takes f7, and also just the obvious queen takes d6. Um, it's surprisingly hard to defend this position. Um, yeah, I mean, just just take if you take stock, I mean, it's just very difficult to defend this position. What happened in the game was that Black just took the took the pawn here on c6, but pretty much Black is just getting mated here. King queen e7, king h6, check again, king g5. But now uh, White found the beautiful shot. Queen takes f6, f7. Pretty much down a whole rook. But his pawns and the queen are ready to checkmate this black king. As evident in the game. Um, there's quite a number of ways to go about this. I think a combination of these pawn pushers are pretty much just ending the game. Um, black decided to play rook f6. But um, one idea is that if you try to go king h6. And I think queen f8 is going to not lead to the same position if um, if black white plays queen f7 it leads to the same position but he plays queen f4 here followed by g4 check and well black gets uh, checkmated very very quickly since king h6 met by that so not very nice to run into that kind of combination there's many of those themes in this kind of position it's very difficult to defend uh, against uh, queen f4 and that kind of theme um, I'm not really sure what black's move is he played rook f6 in the game 
but it's not like this helps at all. White just plays f4, and uh, notice that you can't play king f5 because of queen d5 mate. That's kind of embarrassing, so you got to go king uh, h6, and white just takes the rook. But the worst of all, black is just running into an avalanche of pawns here, and um, the queen on f8 is just a superior, a dominating piece. So queen e2 happened, queen f8 drags up the king. White plays this very, in a very beautiful, uh, quiet move. Threatening queen takes h7, checkmate, so black has to play h6. He gives the check on e5. Black is forced to play king h4, and of course, you know, g5 is met by um, queen e8. When I think, um, or wait a minute, uh, g5. Um, very weird. Why didn't I think of that? G5 is meant by... Right, I, I think I'm just blacking out right now. Um, probably it's here. I don't know. Maybe Queen G6. I mean, it's probably mate or something. I don't know. Um, Queen H6 is pretty much unpreventable, and G3 checkmate is coming, so it's pretty bad for, for Black to run into that. For example, a sample continuation like that might really happen. Quite, quite embarrassing, honestly. Black really has no defense against that. So what happened in the game is black just brought his king further down, white gave it another check, king brought, came back up, and now the strong move f5, threatening queen g, queen g6 in this position, black had to take, white gave it another check, king h4, and after the final move, a very nice move, queen g6 threatening this uh, attack right here, black just resigned here in this position. Um, his only way to defend the pawn I think is with here, but very beautiful pawn checkmate here is happening. A very uh, beautiful kind of finish to this game. I didn't expect this game to, at all to end up with just pawns and queen pawns in a checkmate kind of pattern. Sometimes um, activating the king in such a lonely endgame can actually be dangerous. You got to be careful about you know leaving your king right there. Um, yeah, I just love this overall concept of just giving away the rook, since. Um, since it's just not as important as the mate thread in this kind of position, even though black is up for rook, it's just totally useless in this kind of position. So I'd be um, that's a very beautiful gameplay play by uh, Dennis Kizmatulin. Very very um, kind of shocking move with King G1, um, leaving his op options open with this pawn pushes, knowing that black uh, really has no way to escape this with Queen F8 and Queen F4, Queen H4, G4, H4. These all these kind of moves F4 included too. Um, these kind of moves are just killing uh, killing black, knowing that his rook is just totally useless. If the rook was already down here, maybe black would have counterplay. But even so, um, this is really just an unfortunate series of moves that black has to deal with. So I think that's a very amazing concept, honestly. I don't think King G1 would have crossed my mind, honestly. And I would have played probably a defensive move, I don't know, maybe... I would have played h4 and probably gone for a perpetual check, not a win. It's not really, you're not expecting white to win here in this kind of position. Even if the king is blatantly out here, this rook is terrible. So I think this concept of king g1 is just a good one. And I would consider it probably the best move of the, best move of the, best move I've seen in a while. Um, even the best move that was played recently. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll be uh, posting videos soon enough of um, something but um, be patient with me I'll uh, be posting soon enough see ya or I mean um, see you later